that's one of the things about religion that we have to remember when we're talking about that makes it such a, a hot topic issue is because we're talking about law. Who gets to be God? Who gets to be God's deputies? Who is the most high? Who is the divine authority? It's all about the claim to the most high. The only way that somebody can be higher than us is if we give away our power. Because there's nobody, we're all equal. But we're not equal in our knowledge, so ultimately, I think it does have to be a hierarchy, but it has to be a cooperative hierarchy, like a bee colony. We have to, it's about what our value system is, what we care about. Hello, Hive Mind. Today is May 20th, 2020. I am your host, Nate Cap. Welcome to the 44th Cubbyhole Podcast, where important topics are unveiled, discussed, and tested. Our website is cubbyhole.com. That's C U B B Y W H O L E.com. Today, I'm going to give a little recap on the Seed 4 Growth Conference that just took place last Friday and Saturday, May 14th through the 15th. And after that, I'll be breaking down the triune brain and the important aspects of consciousness that are included, something I meant to speak about earlier on in this podcast series. And it is crucial to understand for all this work shared on the cubbyhole. So before we get into that, I'd like to start out by saying that this event, this Seed 4 Growth Conference event, was not only the greatest seed conference, but in my opinion, it was the greatest conference ever. At least in my lifetime it was. And, you know, in spite of being a webinar, which from my perspective is what we should have been doing for a long time now, for the factor of reaching so many more people it was pretty amazing it was the first of its kind for seed and of course you know there were a few minor tech issues here and there because that's just common and it happens and there were some uh you know time slot issues that were a little off but overall everybody including douglas martin tyler bloyer and the autonomy team, Mark Passio and the One Great Work Network, and of course Brandon who created this whole event. They all did such a great job and really orchestrated the power we still have with the internet to reach so many more people with such high caliber knowledge. So, you know, many of the speakers just delivered such extremely powerful presentations and just about all of them had a similar tone but you know so uniquely different than the rest my deep appreciation goes to the autonomy team for you know magically gluing all these powerful speakers together and making this event run as awesome as it did And I also appreciate Mark for all he does and for streaming the Seed event live on his One Great Work Network platform. It was really cool. And Brandon, my hat goes off to you, brother. You you made this all happen, and I completely appreciate your time and energy to make something this epic and, you know, more notably, this important. It's very inspiring, and also your uh, your presentation, Sight Beyond Illusions, was stellar. Very well done. And I'm definitely looking forward to working towards another future event with these guys for sure. If you didn't get a chance to watch the two-day seat event, I'm putting the link as well as the slides for this show under the show number 44 on the Cubbyhole podcast page. And it should keep you busy for a while. Also, uh, I'll, I'll have my presentation, Relumination of the Imagination, that I gave at the conference up on the Nate page, which is also on the Cubbyhole website. I put a ton of heart into that presentation, so I hope you find value there. Okay, I'm going to dive right into the topic for today, the triune brain. So the triune brain is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting and important pieces of knowledge of self, period. 
We have to recognize this literally, physically, spiritually, and symbolically. And that's the truth. This topic is vital to understanding consciousness, symbolically and in general. A basic understanding of the structure of the human brain is 100% necessary if one truly wants to understand the basic dynamics of consciousness and the current human condition we find ourselves in. The brain is generally recognized as the seat or core of consciousness in the physical body. And I definitely do not ascribe to the notion that consciousness is limited to the brain only, but the brain is for sure the one main organ through which we most directly connect to consciousness on the physical level. The way in which we express ourselves while in physical form has a threefold nature, which is our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. So just as our consciousness itself has a three-in-one nature, so does our human brain. The hypothesis of a threefold triune brain was formulated in the modern era by American neuroscientist Paul McLean who correlated human behavioral manifestations with the physiological structures found naturally in the brain. His research led to the establishment of a concept known as the triune brain. The triune brain model shows that what we generally think of as the human brain is actually three complexes or three smaller brains that work together as one in order to provide the functions necessary for human survival and expression. So a three-in-one brain structure. There are three complexes. The first of these is the oldest in terms of its uh, evolutionary development. It is the deepest section of the brain located underneath the larger brain mass. And what I'm talking about is the R complex. This part of the brain is comprised of the brainstem and the cerebellum. The R stands for reptile, so the reptile complex. This section of the brain has been nicknamed the reptile brain due to the fact that the behavioral traits for which it is responsible for are most often observed in and associated with, you guessed it, reptiles. These include pure survival instinct, direct stimulus response, fight or flight response, competition, compulsiveness, rigidness, aggression, domination, being paranoid, repetition, ritual, and the desire to hoard resources. And we can look at the R complex as being responsible for all core tasks, above all, self preservation. It's also known as the mechanical mind, the lowest part of the brain, which is the oldest, the R complex, reptilian complex, the, the reptile brain, which has to do with motor skills. This is coming from the brainstem area, our cerebellum, which governs motor skills. So what makes our limbs move? It's our fight or flight mechanism. It's the survival part of our brain. And when under stressful situations, the heart pumps blood away from the torso and the head. So no oxygenated blood flowing to the brain or torso. And this means blood has to go to the areas where the body can, you know, fight, fight off other beings. Like the, you know, it goes to the arms and legs, which become our weapons to defend to defend ourselves or to be able to you know run away and in the modern world we're mostly under lots of stress so we are staying and living in this reptile consciousness most of the time due to stress and there's a a uh, really great allegorical film that came out about five or so years ago called the shape of water that I feel really captures the triune brain, especially the R complex. It's totally worth studying, and uh, it's a very awesome movie. And also, without you know giving too much more away about it, it's important to note that the main character is an amphibian man, and that's something 
We should all be thinking when studying the triune brain as zootypes or animalistic behaviors in nature. So for instance, we can relate our reptile part of our brain to that of an alligator or lizard. And I'm going to, you know, further explain what I mean by this. But, uh, you know, let's, let's continue on to the next part of the brain. The second complex of the triune brain is the limbic system. It is also called the mammal brain because it seems to have developed significantly later in biological evolution after the reptilian R complex. And it sits on top of the R complex, just above the brain stem and the cerebellum. The limbic brain includes the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, and the amygdala, which are the functions of this system that generate and regulate the flow of chemicals and chemical interactions that create our emotions. Emotions are a common mammal trait that is generally lacking in most reptiles and lower animals. Reptiles feel pain and undergo basic stimulus response, but they don't show any emotional reactions such as joy and sadness and empathy and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. The limbic system acts as a buffer or shield between our thoughts and actions because it's our emotions which generate feelings within our physiology that make us aware of the impact of our actions that we have on others. It is the evaluating function, the place of our brain valued judgments while determining whether we feel positive or negative towards something and adjusting our attention correctly to that. This area of the brain typically subordinates thinking to feeling. It engages in rationalization of desires, which means people who are driven by their desires and their rational mind, which then they try to explain with, you know, pseudo explanations. It doesn't like to admit that it's the puppet of desire. The limbic system of emotion, rather than, you know, any process of reason and logic, judges whether our ideas are good or bad using its own and sometimes irrational and illogical criteria or judgment and this poses significant danger to us. The limbic system could be seen as the sacred feminine, the spirit or the divine mother aspect of consciousness, the middle chamber, the part of our brain that aligns our emotions with our moral compass. Emotional traits are of a higher order of consciousness than the base reptilian traits displayed through the R complex. Without an operating limbic system, we would have no power to experience compassion or empathy for other beings, and we would be unable to realize the damaging and destructive tendencies and actions we cause, whether they are directed towards ourselves or others. The third and only reason we can be human part of our brain is the section of the triune brain known as the neocortex. And the root neo means new. It is the most recently developed part of the brain as far as biological evolution. It is the most advanced and ramified memory containing area of the human brain. Physiologically, this section rests above the limbic and R complex part of the brain and it accounts for the largest area and mass of the whole brain. It's both hemispheres. The neocortex is also called the human brain because the structure is unique to us human beings. Paul McLean said the neocortex is likened to the mother of invention and father of abstract thought. The neocortex is the complex which creates the electrical and chemical interactions that make it possible for our higher order thinking. Without the neocortex, we would be incapable of logic, reason, art, music, science, creativity, language, and many other skills and traits which are defining characteristics of being human. 
The neocortex provides us with the ability to engage in thought functions that individuate us from the animal kingdom. And here's an allegorical quote by the great Albert Churchward. He says, Reason is the glory of human nature and one of the chief eminences whereon we are raised above our fellow creatures in the lower world. See, see, if we look at Darwin's evolution theory as an allegory rather than literal, we'll be, we'll be met with revealing evolution in consciousness rather than biology only, which I, which I actually don't ascribe to. But the point is, if we start to allegorically see zootypes and understand totemic sociology, then we start to learn the spiritual world of self. We start to understand aspects of consciousness through learning the elemental powers in nature. All zoo types can be looked at as corresponding aspects of self, and our ancient brethren can teach us if we're ready, if we're ready to listen. So we have the lower part of our brain, which is the R complex, and then the middle or midbrain, which is the limbic system, and then the neocortex, the higher order thinking, upper part of our brain. These three brains correspond to three expressions, which is thoughts, emotions, and actions, which I'm going to uh, explain shortly after this symbolic breakdown. So thoughts can be seen symbolically as the father, creator, and mind principle. Then the emotion, which is the mother, spirit, and sacred feminine principle. And then your divine male child, which is actions, which is the manifested behavior. So first, thoughts, which is the creator aspect, meaning the universe is mental. Second is emotions, which is the internal expression through how we feel. Thoughts coming to the body and then expressed through our emotions, which is the sacred feminine. And then actions which is the behavior. And this is the sacred masculine or divine male principle. Now, when it comes to the individual unit of consciousness or monad of consciousness, there are basically three expressions of consciousness that can express itself within the reality that we live in. We experience three manifested forms of consciousness. And this is how we make ourselves known to other people, to each other. And these three expressions are our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. Thoughts can be looked at as the primary expression of consciousness. Thoughts just are. They aren't really male or female. They just are. Thought activity is a fundamental basis of consciousness. This would be considered the creator aspect within us. So the father aspect of consciousness, that's really important to understand. This, this aligns with the idea that the universe is mental, which is made up of thought energy. And this can be further understood by studying the Kybalion, especially the principle of mentalism. Everything that we experience ultimately had to derive someplace in the past as a thought. When we look at a pencil, someone had to devise a tool that would record ideas or data. It was a thought that had to first arise in order to create that pencil. And this is with anything. Any action we've taken, any technology that was invented, any experience that we've had all first had to start with a thought. The second expression of consciousness is our emotions through how we feel, the inner self, the internal expression of consciousness. This expression is basically the thoughts coming into the body, carrying an energy that is being expressed through the physiology where we feel it. And that's called our emotions. This is considered the sacred feminine quality of consciousness. You can look at this quality as the divine mother of the Trinity. It is our emotion that is the spirit in which we express things. So. It is the mother or Holy Spirit in which we express from within, from our internal feminine aspect. 
This is the expression of consciousness that connects us to nature. So we have the thoughts as the father and the emotions as the mother. Then the third aspect of consciousness would be our actions. What we actually do with what we know in our mind and what we carry in our emotions or our spirit, which create what we know as our manifested behavior, our human behavior. This is the action that we take into the world in relation to others. This would be the child of our thoughts and emotions. So looking at the father or thoughts as the creator aspect of consciousness, which expresses the mind, and then the emotions as the sacred feminine quality of our consciousness, which expresses the spirit. And we could look at our actions as the divine child. Basically, the unification of both the thoughts aligned with emotions determining what we do and then creating the actions in which we interact with others in the world. Actions are a male energy, so we can look at this as a divine male child, which would be the sun. So this gives us our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions, or creator, Holy Spirit, and divine child. This is also our mind, body, and spirit connection. But just remember the Trinity as the three in one, or the triune aspects of consciousness. It's important to note that we can, we can find many mystical traditions and religions that have teachings of the Trinity as well. If you think about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, and then correspond those biblical or archetypal names, such as thought being the Father or God principle, the Holy Ghost or Spirit being the invisible forces in nature, or sacred feminine principle, and then action being the divine child or son. Now, when we have an understanding of the qualities of the triune consciousness, we can liken the neocortex to the divine child of the Trinity. The divine or sacred child is always masculine because it is the active principle. That's very important to understand. And then that masculine active principle can and should become balanced with the positive emotion and intuition and thought so we can generate a manifested order. It is the new or young part of the brain, the symbolic child or son of the father, aka the R complex, and the mother, which is the limbic system. Since the neocortex makes it possible for our highest forms of thought and expression, it is also interesting to note that it is also the highest part of the brain in its physical position. When working properly, the neocortex is designed to function as the central executor of the brain. And there are some scientists out there who have referred to the neocortex, the neocortex as the CEO of the brain complex, as its proper functioning services to regulate the activities taking place in both the R complex and limbic system. So to understand how these command and control functions of the neocortex work, we need to observe the structure of the neocortex itself. So looking at the overhead view slide of the neocortex brain hemispheres, if by whatever means a person's neocortex may become significantly imbalanced towards one brain hemisphere or the other, the neocortex as a whole complex will cease to function as the executive control center of the brain. And this means that it will stop regulating the process that takes place in both the R complex and the limbic system. So upon having reached this state of brain dysfunction, the executive control functions of the brain will then be downgraded and turned over to either the R complex or the limbic system, depending on the nature of the original imbalance. So if the nature of the brain imbalance favors the left brain hemisphere, the neocortex will give up its regulatory 
higher order functions and then the limbic system will cease to provide emotional balance between thought and action thus the r complex will begin to dominate the whole brain system this type of imbalance then results in a being who operates out of reptilian consciousness and then desires to dominate and control everyone around them a being suffering from this type of brain dysfunction would display behavioral traits such as domination, obsession, greed, hoarding, continual desire to control, compulsive tendencies, total lack of concern for others, aggression, cruelty, and needless violence. It is easy to recognize this type of brain behavior in our modern societies because this type of ego dominator imbalance is nearly everywhere. The second type of brain imbalance towards the right brain hemisphere results in the executive control of the brain being shunted to the limbic system. This results in a state of victim consciousness in which the person can no longer control what is taking place within themselves and essentially becomes ruled by out of control emotions. The R complex ceases to provide functions related to basic survival instinct and a different set of undesirable traits manifest themselves. These states include nervousness, paranoia, lack of self-worth, submission, guilt, fear, masochism, depression, and even suicidal tendencies. We see that these types of personality traits are also overly abundant in our society. And as I've stated in past shows and in my newest presentation, most of the world is under mind control by a control system, which I refer to as an R complex executor system, a top down control structure that's built into the minds of society, which holds most people in a left brained reptile fight or flight consciousness. Basically, the most efficient way to keep control of everyone's minds by constantly playing with their emotions to keep them confused and in total fear. And this keeps them divided amongst themselves, which dominators feast on like crazy. And, you know, as long as people don't find a way to align their thoughts, emotions, and actions and live in accord to natural law, they will forever remain enslaved. I'm going to read a quote out of the Kybalion by the three initiates. The half wise, recognizing the comparative unreality of the universe, imagine that they may defy its laws, uppercase laws, such are vain and presumptuous fools, and they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. The truly wise, knowing the nature of the universe, use uppercase law against lowercase laws, the higher against the lower, and by the art of alchemy transmute that which is undesirable into that which is worthy, and thus triumph. Mastery consists not in abnormal dreams, visions, and fantastic imaginings or living, but in using the higher forces against the lower, escaping the planes of the lower planes by vibrating on the higher. Transmutation, not presumptuous denial, is the weapon of the master. So I'm going to end on that note, and that is all we have today, guys. So I hope you found clarity and value in this show today and you can find more shows presentations and news at cubbyhole.com also please make sure to keep your eyes out for the next show as i'll be going further into the methods of manipulation especially elaborating on chaos sorcery and as for now a new show comes out every friday at 12 p.m pacific time so stay tuned for more and if you have any questions regarding the topics for this show or any other shows, please email us at cubbyhole at mail.com. That's cubbyhole at mail.com. Also, any donations are appreciated as anything that's given will go directly to the Cubbyhole website. 
Just hit the donation button on the website and it's set up pretty easy to operate from there. And thanks to those who have donated so far. It's very much appreciated. Okay guys, I'm your host Nate Cap. Thank you for listening and remember, do no harm, defend truth, and keep transcending dogma. <laughs>